Poems Every Child Should Know Edited by Mary E. Burt Section 58 Read for LibriVox.org by Kara Schallenberg This section contains the following poems. Cupid Drowned Cupid Stung Cupid and My Composby and A Ballad for a Boy Part 5 Continued Cupid Drowned Cupid Drowned, Cupid Stung, and Cupid and My Camposby are three dainty poems recommended by Mrs. Margaret Mooney of the Albany Teachers' College in her Foundation Studies in Literature. Children are always delighted with them. T'other day, as I was twining roses for a crown to dine in, what of all things mid the heap should I light on fast asleep but the little desperate elf, the tiny traitor, love himself? By the wings I picked him up like a bee, and in a cup of my wine I plunged and sank him. Then what do you think I did? I drank him. Faith, I thought him dead, not he. There he lives with tenfold glee. And now this moment with his wings I feel him tickling my heart-strings. Lee Hunt Cupid Stung Cupid once upon a bed of roses laid his weary head, luckless urchin not to see within the leaves a slumbering bee. The bee awaked, with anger wild, the bee awaked and stung the child. Loud and piteous are his cries, to Venus quick he runs, he flies. O oh, mother, I am wounded through, I die with pain, in sooth I do. Stung by some little angry thing, some serpent on a tiny wing. A bee it was, for once I know I heard a rustic call it so. Thus he spoke, and she the while heard him, with a soothing smile. Then said, My infant, if so much thou feel the little wild bee's touch, How must the heart, ah, Cupid, be, the hapless heart that's stung by thee? Thomas More Cupid and My Composby Cupid and my Composby played at cards for kisses. Cupid paid. He stakes his quiver, bow, and arrows, his mother's doves, and team of sparrows. Loses them, too, then down he throws the coral of his lips, the rose growing on his cheek, but none knows how. With them the crystal of his brow, and then the dimple of his chin, all these did my Composby win. At last he set her both his eyes, she won, and Cupid blind did rise. O oh, love, hath she done this to thee? What shall, alas, become of me? John Lyly A Ballad for a Boy Violo Roseboro, one of our good authors, brought to me A Ballad for a Boy, saying, I believe it is one of the poems that every child ought to know. It is included in this compilation out of respect to her opinion, and also because the boys to whom I have read it said it was great. The lesson in it is certainly fine. Men who are true men want to settle their own disputes by a hand-to-hand -hand fight, but they will always help each other when a third party or the elements interfere. Humanity is greater than human interests. When George the Third was reigning, a hundred years ago, he ordered Captain Farmer to chase the foreign foe. "'You're not afraid of shot,' said he, "'you're not afraid of wreck, so cruise about the west of France, in the frigate called Quebec. Quebec was once a Frenchman's town, but twenty years ago King George the Second sent a man called General Wolfe, you know, to clamber up a precipice and look into Quebec, as you'd look down a hatchway when standing on the deck.' If Wolf could beat the Frenchmen then, so you can beat them now. Before he got inside the town he died, I must allow. But since the town was won for us, it is a lucky name, and you'll remember Wolf's good work, and you shall do the same. Then Farmer said, I'll try, sir, and Farmer bowed so low that George could see his pigtail, tied in a velvet bow. George gave him his commission, and that it might be safer, signed, King of Britain, King of France, and sealed it with a wafer. 
Then proud was Captain Farmer in a frigate of his own, and grander on his quarter-deck than George upon his throne. He'd two guns in his cabin, and on the spar-deck ten, and twenty on the gun-deck, and more than ten score men. And as a huntsman scours the brakes with sixteen brace of dogs, with two and thirty cannon, the ship explored the fogs. From Cape La Hogue to Ushant, from Roquefort to Belle Isle, she hunted game till reef and mud were rubbing on her keel. The fogs are dried, the frigate's side is bright with melting tar, the lad up in the foretop sees square white sails afar. The east wind drives three square-sailed masts from out the Breton Bay, and, "'Clear for action!' farmer shouts, and reefers yell, "'Hooray!' The Frenchman's captain had a name I wish I could pronounce. A Breton gentleman was he, and wholly free from bounce. One like those famous fellows who died by guillotine, for honour and the fleur-de-lis, and Antoinette the Queen. The Catholic for Louis, the Protestant for George, each captain drew as bright a sword as saintly smiths could forge. And both were simple seamen, but both could understand how each was bound to win or die for flag and native land. The French ship was La Surveillante, which means the watchful maid. She folded up her headdress and began to cannonade. Her hull was clean, and ours was foul. We had to spread more sail. On canvas stays and topsail yards her bullets came like hail. Sore smitten were both captains, and many lads beside, and still to cut our rigging the foreign gunners tried. A sail-clad spar came flapping down athwart a blazing gun. We could not quench the rushing flames, and so the Frenchman won. Our quarter-deck was crowded, the waist was all aglow. Men hung upon the taffrail, half scorched, but loath to go. Our captain sat where once he stood, and would not quit his chair. He bade his comrades leap for life and leave him bleeding there. The guns were hushed on either side, the Frenchmen lowered boats. They flung us planks and hen-coops and everything that floats. They risked their lives, good fellows, to bring their rivals' aid. "'Twas by the conflagration the peace was strangely made. "'La Surveillante was like a sieve. "'The victors had no rest. "'They had to dodge the east wind to reach the port of Brest. "'And where the waves leapt lower and the riddled ship went slower, "'in triumph yet in funeral guise came fisher-boats to tow her. "'They dealt with us as brethren. "'They mourned for farmer dead, and as the wounded captives passed, each Breton bowed the head. Then spoke the French lieutenant, "'Twas fire that won, not we. You never struck your flag to us. You'll go to England free. "'Twas the sixth day of October, 1779, a year when nations ventured against us to combine. Quebec was burned and farmer slain, by us remembered not. But thanks be to the French book, wherein they're not forgot." Now you, if you've to fight the French, my youngster, bear in mind, those seamen of King Louis, so chivalrous and kind. Think of the Breton gentlemen who took our lads to breast, and treat some rescued Breton as a comrade and a guest. End of section 58. Read by Kara Schallenberg on November twenty-second, two 2006, in Oceanside, California.